Imagine living your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, your master certified coach and midlife mentor. And I'm so glad to be here with you again for this week's episode, which is taking a look at a big fear in midlife, dying too soon. I know, I know, y'all come here all smiley, ready to listen to my little saxophone jingle at the beginning of the podcast with some upbeat midlife goodness. What am I doing today, being Debbie Downer? (laughs) Well, my friend, kinda. (laughs) A little bit of Debbie Downer is like a spoonful of sugar. It will help the medicine go down. The midlife goodness is the medicine I'm talking about. So Yes, we're going to shine the flashlight on the thoughts in your brain about the big common fear that most of us are thinking about in midlife, dying too soon without living your best life. There, I said it. I hate talking about death and dying, but when you really drill down, this is kind of what's behind feeling so urgent these days, right? I mean, if everything was going along tickety-boo, you would probably only be focusing on that weird wrinkle or line between your eyebrows or maybe a couple of chin hairs. But it's more than that. It's this urgency that you're running out of time. And what is running out of time code word for? Dying too soon. So let's go there and see what we can learn. (laughs) Now, before we do that, this episode is sponsored by my Regret Proof Life Private Coaching Packages. So ask yourself, are you tired of being so stuck and confused? When you're ready to really dig in, figure out what you want in your next chapter and prepare yourself to move forward with confidence, this is the coaching program for you. Using my signature Becoming Bold and Brave framework and MAP breakthrough process, as well as mindfulness strategies and thought work, you'll finally have more clarity than you have had in decades and be ready to move forward. Typical topics to work on with coaching are career change, empty nest, aging, aging well, not just aging, (laughs) aging well, regret proofing, relationships, self-care and accountability, that sort of thing. Confidence and courage are natural spinoff bonuses so that you can feel free and happier than you felt in decades. You really have to remember that there's a cost to staying stuck. So if you're ready to make sure you move forward and feel amazing about your next chapter, you should absolutely apply and book your no obligation call to see if we're a good fit to work together. So head over to www.talktosusie.com and get started. All right, now where were we? Oh yeah, shining a light on our deepest, darkest fears in midlife about running out of time. That you don't have enough time, All that good stuff, you know what I mean. So first, let's take a look at what you mean when your mind goes in this direction. And then we're going to talk about some strategies about how to think in a more useful way. So what does that thought and feeling actually look like for you? For me, I notice the urgent kind of worrisome feeling first. That's what I feel first. And, you know, you might notice the thought first. People are different. Either way, it's fine. Totally fine. Um, But I notice the feeling first. And as I mentioned before, the important thing is that you increase your awareness about the thought feeling connection and understand what's going on up there in your brain. Now, I remember the first time I really felt this and understood it. (laughs) It was in the bathroom. Now, I know this might be TMI, but, you know, we share stuff in the podcast. (laughs) I was just doing regular bathroom things. And when I went to wash my hands, I had a fleeting thought about weight gain, and I remember thinking that I always assumed I would lose the baby weight by the time I was 50. (laughs) Now, a shocking point about this little memory. I don't know why I don't know why I remember that I was in the bathroom. I know what bathroom I was in. It's weird. I guess because it was like a shocking little memory or a little thought. So anyway, first, my babies are in university, or they were when I had this little thought. (laughs) It was kind of a big thought. And second, I was in my 50s. 
it felt like a news flash. What the heck? I always thought I had plenty of time to lose the baby weight, yet here I am. At this age, I assumed the weight would be long gone, and it wasn't, and it felt scary, like I was running out of time. It felt urgent, like I wanted to be healthier, and wait for it, I might die never having lost my baby weight. That was the thought in the bathroom that day. It was kind of like I got bonked on the head by a coconut (laughs) and I had a wake up call, kind of epiphany about my age and my health goals. What a time warp I must have been in. Like it was really shocking. But I think you get where I'm going with this. Before, when we felt urgent about accomplishing a goal, the deadline didn't seem so urgent, right? We wanted to accomplish the goal, but the deadline didn't feel urgent. It felt like you could mess it up and still have time. Now it feels finite, like you got the memo that you're a human being and that human beings don't live forever. And that means you won't live forever. Now, this awareness of mortality is a midlife thing for sure. It can cause anxiety for some and then hopefully acceptance as well. We usually get to the acceptance part, (laughs) but this is often part of the midlife funk phenomenon. It's part of the transition and it's loaded with thoughts and feelings. Okay, so that's when it started sinking in with me (laughs) in the bathroom. Uh, What about you? What do you think of when it comes to something that you're running out of time to do? Here are some common things. See if it helps you identify what these thoughts look like for you. Maybe being more fulfilled at work, having time to make enough money, have the kind of relationships you really want, spend more time with friends, maybe have more friends, have more courage to live by your own values and priorities. Be comfortable being more authentic, being as healthy and fit as you can be, having a particular travel experience, creating a legacy, having more fun, being more comfortable expressing your true feelings, having time to repair important relationships, maybe being more purposeful, maybe living someplace else like a dream location and maybe allowing yourself to be happier. Now, these are just some examples. There is urgency for a reason. You are indeed getting older. (laughs) That's part of the fact. That's just the way it is. But thinking that you're running out of time is optional and it doesn't help. What you do right now with the time that you have and that you control is essential. It's critical. But it's so easy to get wrapped up with that idea, that way of thinking that you won't have enough time. And what that really means is that you might die too soon before you live your best life. Now, you may know that I'm quite familiar with this idea of dying too soon. In fact, I explain why in the very beginning of my new book, 50 Ways to Celebrate Life After 50. I start the introduction by stating, and I quote, let's celebrate. I mean, really, let's look at this whole aging thing logically. You're here. You're alive. That's reason enough to celebrate. Period. That's my perspective. And the reason is because both of my parents died way too young. My mother died at 32 and my father died at 41. This is why I think it's so important to celebrate your age, which is easy because it's your birthday. It's easy to celebrate your age by celebrating your birthdays. Now, I definitely like to celebrate birthdays and getting older because it's something my parents didn't have the privilege to do. I've outlived my parents by decades, and this has definitely shaped my perspective. So even though I had that little shakaruni in the bathroom that day when I realized that I was in my 50s and I thought I would have lost my baby weight already, (laughs) I generally have a pretty good handle on why it's a good idea to believe that you have enough time. Because you're alive. Because you can. Because you actually have control over your time, even though you don't believe it. And remember, if you're feeling all panicky and urgent about dying too soon, It's because of the way you're thinking. 
Now, I know that illnesses and disease can make things more complex and scary, so please forgive me if this isn't completely relevant or resonating with you. But even if you're struggling with your health, there's a lot that you can do with your mindset in managing how you're thinking. So when it comes to age, what would it be like for you to simply think it's an opportunity to be grateful and to really focus on what you might regret so that you don't? You don't want to regret. You definitely don't want to regret. Like not be in a blur, like not have your head in the sand but to accept reality and grab the reins, take charge, make decisions about how you spend your valuable time that make total sense with your priorities. Now, this takes focus and effort, but you're alive. You can work on this. You're not dead yet. (laughs) Again, I hate talking about this so bluntly, but really, fear of running out of time really is about dying early before this other stuff is done and before you're a fulfilled, happy camper. So what can you do about these thoughts? They pop in, of course they do. It's so common, and so is what we're afraid of. It's something we have in common in midlife, but the thing is, the thing that makes the freak out better is the extent to which you manage your mind. And that is mindfulness again for the win. When you find yourself in a spin about dying too soon and not having enough time to do the things that you really want to do or say or feel or experience, I think that's actually a good thing. Like it can be painful. It's hard. It's might even be dramatic. Like it's hard, but it's what I like to call a glorious spin. It's clarity. It's also clarity. You're feeling something. You're sensing some good emotional stuff. It can help you take the next step, which is to understand what you need to do to move forward, prioritizing what you want. Classic mindfulness work. If you're worried about not having something because you ran out of time, that means that you want it. Now, what will you do with this information? This is gold. You could just keep spinning, wasting time, feeling confused, hopeless, and anxious, or You can be grateful you got a clue to what you really want. Awareness is the first step. So ask yourself, what would you have to do to actually prioritize that thing, that experience, that career, that relationship to do that thing to create what you want? So ask yourself that. What would you have to do to prioritize that thing to create what you want, whatever it is? Now, you can't control people but you can control yourself. So what can you do? What can you say? What can you not do? Or what can you avoid saying? Or whatever it is to make sure that you show up as the person who values and wants this to be a priority in your life. Then take the next step. What would you have to feel to do all of those things? And then... What would you have to practice thinking so you would feel that way, so you could do those things, so you could create the outcome you want, what you actually want while you're alive? It's the same process as all of the mindfulness work we do here in the podcast and in my coaching programs. It's all connected. That's why I'm always asking you to look for those connections. When you think something, it makes you feel something. If you're feeling something, you are thinking something that's creating it. When you feel something, you do something. If you're doing something, it's coming from the way you're feeling. So these things are all connected. And when you understand these connections, you'll get more perspective on what's going on in your mind. Now, I'll give you an example. I had a client once who was confused about what she wanted in her next chapter except that she had a vague idea that she was ready for more at work and she thought she might apply for a new job in the same field, like more responsibility, but the same field. Now, through our work together, she realized how important it was for her to live near the water someday in retirement. She lived nowhere near any water. (laughs) She was in the middle of the United States, but it became a priority for her and she ended up wanting to create more time for this dream lifestyle so she wouldn't run out of time. She ended up only applying for jobs near water. 
And that entailed a big cross-country move. And lo and behold, she had the perfect amount of time to find her dream job near the ocean pre-retirement. It all seemed so vague and huge when she was stuck in spinning, but then she got clarity, saw what she had to do to make it happen, feel determined rather than scared, and think a thought that created determination and self-confidence instead. Like, I know I have a lot to contribute and can have it all with this plan. You can always do this sort of thought work too with more curiosity. That really helps. Instead of just shooing away the scary thoughts about dying, that's what I would always do. Oh, shoo away, shoo, go shoo, shoo, shoo. That, that's too hard. That's too scary. That's too difficult. But instead of just shooing away the scary thoughts about dying too soon or running out of time, ask yourself why you're thinking this way. What is really going on? What can the feeling tell you about what you really want in life? How can you put yourself first and live your best life? And in the end, you owe this to yourself. Do you believe it? Do you believe that you owe this to yourself? Nobody else can do this for you. When you think the thoughts, you get to enjoy the fear inside your body. (laughs) And when you improve your thinking to move forward, you get to enjoy those results too. Now, which would you prefer? This is your life, my friend. You can always make the choice to do some solid regret proofing. Way more fun than a glorious, scary spin, wouldn't you agree? (laughs) The choice is yours. Okay, that's it for this episode. Sorry about all the death and dying talk, but sometimes you just got to say it like it is. As you know, my focus as a midlife coach is to help you waste less time being afraid of not reaching your potential and feeling stuck about aging, about empty nest, about relationships, about your career about being more compassionate toward yourself, about all of it. It's time to get excited about your life again. Remember, being the queen of your brain domain is the best way to be, and I am here to help. This is what you'll learn when you hire me as a coach. Learning the mindfulness concepts are one thing, but when it comes to applying the concepts, that's when you really benefit from coaching. That's why you should make sure to join the Finally First Club. We're waiting for you. It's your one-stop home away from home for midlife coaching, community, and connection. You can finally get that fresh perspective that will help you sail into your next chapter with a big smile on your face instead of that confused, spinny kind of look. (laughs) So join us now at www.iamfinallyfirst.com. For show notes and links, head over to www.coachwithsusie.com. And to get a copy of my new book, 50 Ways to Celebrate Life After 50, check out Amazon or your favorite online bookseller or go to www.50waystocelebrate.com. Let's do this, ladies. It's time for you to put yourself first one thought at a time. Thanks so much for listening and I'll talk to you next week.